Hey guys, so again, I did not expect to be making videos of them losing. I thought that they were actually going to win that game against the 49ers and be playing in the NFC Championship, uh, but they didn't. And we had Matt LaFleur's actually postseason press conference the other day. Now, he was asked about Ja, and now this is a Ja video quickly. Um, and he was asked about Ja, and he expected uh, everything was going smoothly with Ja, and Matt LaFleur doesn't have a very good poker face, face, but he definitely seemed like him and John were getting along. When he had that big interception event in Dallas, he went over, he hugged them, dat them up, all that good stuff. However, today I just saw that Ja did post something on Instagram. Now, if we all know one thing about how today's athletes work, Instagram is a pretty big thing in what you post and what you say on there. But I will preface it with one thing with Ja, that Ja is very different. Ja is on his own um, track, and that is very good, honestly, a lot of times. It's kind of like uh, what Dennis Rodman was for the Bulls, and I'm not saying Ja is Dennis Rodman. I'm just saying that some people are on a different track. And I guess it depends on how the front office wants to deal with it and how head coaches want to deal with it. However, let me show you guys this post from Ja, and uh, I will read it. So it says, this is Ja's post. He says, thank you, God. Thank you, Lambo, for six years. Thank you to those who showed love throughout my journey. Now, I don't know what that means. It says, for six years. Now, we do know that he is still underneath contract. Uh, if you actually do check out uh, his his sport track, they have his potential uh, dead cap hits. Now, if the Packers, I guess, were to cut him, uh, it looks like it's like post, let's see. If they were to release, pre-6-1 release, wait, no, I, I, I think I may be reading this wrong, but let me just look at these numbers. It doesn't seem like they're going to be saving much, I think, if they cut him. Uh, the dead cap hit is $27 million. I'm pretty sure Brian Gutekunst and um, and uh, and Ball don't want to take the cap hit of $27 million. So I don't think Ja is going to get cut. I have a feeling that he is just posting this in a way to just say thank you for everything that like you know that the fans do. Uh, and then I he did say he wants to be here. He wants to be in Lambeau. So I'm going to assume that maybe he's also just frustrated with how things ended. Uh, a lot of people do go through that. A lot of guys like post the playoffs and you get knocked out. You go through frustrations, and uh, they also do need him. <laughs> I don't, you know, if they were to cut him and be like, oh, like we're just gonna, you know, roll somebody else out there. I think that would be very gutsy of Brian Gutekunst. Granted, you know, their track record has been very good with this, so. I have to trust them, um, but they need him because we don't know what we're going to be getting out of Eric Stokes. Uh, his health record has been up and down, and even when he is healthy, he's not on the same level he was his rookie year. His rookie year is fantastic. Now, we've seen John when he does play. He is still a very good corner. He did show some slowness. Uh, I think it was against Minnesota versus Jordan Addison. He Addison kind of shredded him a little bit. But this is also because Ja was not consistently playing. So maybe he's got a better game plan. I'm sure he's going to be talking to coaches about how they feel about him moving forward and him with his agent. Um, but they, you know, there's a dead cap hit of look, looks like $27 million. If he is cut, and then also next year he has a dead cap hit of nineteen million, so I don't think Brian Gutekunst is gonna want to take these dead cap hits, especially because he's young. He's still only twenty seven years old, uh, turning twenty seven years old. So I don't think the Packers would do this uh, unless things have become that toxic and that bad between Ja and the front office and where the team wants to go forward. Packers do have, I believe, it's five picks in the top one hundred. So they do have a lot of draft capital unless maybe they do like other corners out there that they think they can replace Ja and also that they feel comfortable with Ballantine and Ballantine uh, and Stokes coming back. I don't recommend it. I think Ja is still a very good player and a playmaker. 
uh, especially after they got rid of Rasul. Douglas, they need corners desperately. Uh, they need corners and they need safeties. Their secondary is very weak, and the only actual ball hawk on the team is actually probably Josh, so I would not recommend getting rid of him. But we'll see what happens. Uh, guys, like and subscribe. Go Pack Go. I'm going to make more videos about the Packers. And let me know what you think about this Josh situation, whether to keep him or whether you think we should uh, cut our ties with him. Be well. Talk to you guys later. Peace.